John's chapters 1, I mean uh, ver chapter 1, verses 1 through 18. Amen. And Rich, you got Luke up there, buddy. We're all right. Just let it be. Amen. Luke, Luke won't be upset. <laughs> Go for it. God bless. Reading from the book of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life, and the light was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the world became flesh, and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth come through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God the only Son who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known the word of the Lord. I thank you, John. <laughs>
Nothing. You're all clear. I said I was late. And she smiled. Yes, but there's a one hour grace period. So I asked, oh really? What's grace? It's 15 million writer, you know? 15 million books, that's a Hertz clerk. What's grace? And she said, I don't know. I guess what it means is that even though you're supposed to pay, you don't have to. Now that's a good start to a definition, says Phil Yancey. I also recently, and I uh, apologize this, the two regular, to regular attenders, you might have heard this recently, but these really have impacted my life. Stories I'm just briefly going to tell you. And grace is a quality of life more than a power. That Jesus chose to live the quality of grace rather than exert power. The Bible says that. He said, I can call down 10,000 angels. I can call down a legion of angels to fight. But he doesn't choose to do that. Instead, he chooses to die on the cross. That's grace. But it's a paradox, which I learned in high school English class. Paradox is something that seems to contradict, but when you take a closer look, it gets explained. Now, grace is not an exercise of power, but it's more powerful than power. Stay with me. His name is Myron Augsburger. I heard him preach some years ago, but two stories of Myron, Myron Augsburger really uh, have really touched me. One is he's, a, uh, he's down in Washington, D.C., and he's planning the church, and uh, he's just, you know, walking along the uh, you know, he's just walking along and, you know, he's church plant, so he's interested in people. Guy's on the bench, they start a, con a conversation. And the guy goes and says, are you a preacher? And Myron said, well, matter of fact, I am. And the man almost sneered. He said, tell me, what difference does it make in my life that Jesus died on the cross 2,000 years ago? <laughs> Myron said, I could have talked to him about some theories of the atonement, of theology, but instead I looked at him and asked, do you have some friends? He said, yeah, I have friends. I said, suppose one gets in trouble. He said, you hang in with them. I said, it really gets severe. He said, you still hang in. I said, it gets really tough. When can you cop out? He looked at me in amazement and said, man, if, you're, if he's your friend, you never cop out. Then I smiled and said, and God came to us in Jesus as our friend. And we're in trouble, and he hung in. Our trouble got really difficult, and he hung in. When could Jesus cop out? The man looked at me, and it was almost as though lights went out, went on in his eyes. He smiled and said, you mean that is why Jesus had to die? I said, that's one reason. He came and said, your problem is now my problem. He got up from where he was sitting, squared his shoulders, and nodded his head, and turned and walked down the sidewalk. I watched him go, and I said to myself, man, you don't know, but you've just been evangelized. Once you know a God who says, your problem is now my problem, you can never be the same. Jesus came to overcome evil, but not by exercising superior power, by expressing his superior quality of love and grace and mercy, even to the death. This guy, Myron Augsburg, one time he, he spoke down in uh, uh, the Good Friday Breakfast. And uh, he was there. And I just remember this story as is, is clear as day. Um, this, uh, th th this guy named Herman Rimpel, was, uh, he had a place in, uh, in, in, in Russia. And, uh, you know, he, he had a big farm. And, you know, his friends with the czar. And, 
you know, they had, you know, was close with the White Army and all this stuff, but the problem was there was this thing called the Red Army, or Red Army, and there was this thing called this Communist Revolution. And they're going to be moving people out. And uh, one day, Herman was just uh, going to the store for his wife, and he came home, and he looks over, and there's this cattle car full of people. And the guy says, sir, sir, Herman, what? The guy says, we haven't eaten all day. So Herman Ripple went over to the rip, to the cattle car, and he took his bologna and cheese and through the slats, he just put stuff through the, the holes in the, in the cattle car, and he, he fed the people. And then down the road, the Red Army beat the White Army, and Herman Rimple and his family got sent to Siberia. And uh, they were Mennonites, and I, I want to tell you, Mennonites are resourceful people, and even when he lost his farm, he lost everything, he started making some deals, and communists couldn't stand that, so they, they arrested him, and uh, he was found guilty. And all of a sudden, he was in front of a, of a commissar. And Herman Rimple knew this was it, and this was over. And he was called in. And the commissar looked at him and said, Have we met? We had met, haven't we? And Herman Rimple looked at him and said, No, sir, I, I don't think we had met. I mean, this was like certain death. And, and he said, were you in a certain town in Russia? And Herman said, yeah, yes, I was. He said, did you ever hear someone call out from a cattle car for help? He said, well, yes. He said, what did you do? He said, well, I pushed the bologna and the cheese and threw the slats. And the commissar said, well, yeah, I want to tell you, I was that guy. And he says, I'm not going to sentence you. Instead, I would like you to emigrate. And, the Rimple, and then Herman spoke up and said, well, how about my family? And all the Rimple family went actually to Los Angeles. And through his act of kindness, his life was saved. Grace. Grace. God's grace saved his life. And whether in this life or the next life, God's grace is powerful. I asked Jesus, how much do you love me? He said, this much. And he spread his arms. And he died for you and for me. You know, this morning I was, I, I was, I was in prayer. And I felt like, you know, God, you know, just like saying, get close to me, get close to me. And, you know, I, I, I started to say, God, God, help me to be nice. And I felt like God said to me, that is the wrong prayer. I don't want you to be nice. I want you to be kind. Is there a difference between being nice and being kind? I think so. You can fake being nice and still feel really angry and really hurtful. And like, yeah, I'm being nice, but you're going to get yours. But you can't fake being kind. And in Romans chapter 2, the Bible says that the kindness of God leads to repentance. It changes our lives. Today, as we come to the communion table, you know, the beauty of this service is uh, you come in on Christmas Eve, and you leave on Christmas Day. And I pray that God's grace is a God thing. And all, God's ask, all God asks us to do is to open ourselves. To let His grace do His work in our lives. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we love you. Do an inside job on each of us here and 
help us, Lord, to focus or to let you focus on us. We thank you to you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Lord Jesus, help us to open ourselves to your communion table. We pray this in your name. May we, may we connect with you tonight in a special way. We ask this in your name, Jesus.